I'm Rick Hurst, I'm Maracana's HTML5 instructor, and I'm here today to talk to you about HTML5 forms, and more particularly, how to override the default look and feel of the validation messages within HTML5. Uh, now, I'm not saying that HTML5 form validation UI sucks, per se, I'm just saying that once you know how, you can override this and make it look as you need it to. The uh, biggest problem with HTML5 form validation is, number one, the browsers they see them completely differently. It's not like a slight color change between Firefox and Chrome. They are drastically different. It's almost like night and day. Uh, that's number one. And number two is that the Chrome developer tools, when you inspect one of these elements and try to adjust the CSS, it doesn't let you do it. You can't go in there and adjust a box shadow and then save it out to your CSS file. It won't let you do it. So you have to go under the hood and learn how to do this. And that's why I put together this screencast to show you how to do that. So we're going to create an HTML5 page, we're going to open up Chrome, we're going to look at the inspector tools, show you the default behavior, and then I'm going to show you how to override it and get it looking just as you need it to. So I'll see you in there. So let's start with creating a HTML5 page. Just got a simple text editor open, and we're going to start with a sample HTML5 page. And we're going to, inside here, I think I should uh, add a form of some description. Okay, so let's just try form and call it sample form. Inside this field set, I'm going to add a couple of labels. So uh, username is probably one. Um, maybe choose a username. Might make more sense. Um, required field, this is standard HTML5, um, which will force some validation, which I'll show you in a second. Let's do another couple of labels. How about um, email address? So enter your email address, sounds good to me. Um, and let's do another one, label for password. Um, choose a password. Okay, what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna set type to equal password here. And I'm also gonna do type equals email here. And you'll see why in a second. And then we should probably have a submit button. Okay. So let's just uh, open up this in localhost and see what it looks like on Chrome. OK, so we have a st standard form here. As soon as I click Submit, you've got please fill out this field, fill something in. Please fill out this field, fill it in. And it says please enter an email address. So you have to have some sort of email address. And that will now validate. And then please fill out this field, and so on. So that works. That's your typical form validation. What I want to show you is how to override this stuff. Uh, also, this doesn't really tell you when something is valid or not. Um, apart from having these call out bubbles, it'd be really nice if we could have some highlighting or maybe an image here saying it's valid or if it's a required field. So let's go over to um, let's go over to a text editor and let's try that out. Um, one thing I'm going to do here as well, I'm going to have a pattern match for the password. This is an, again, HTML5 feature. Um, we can just do something like this. Um, uh, backslash s. I think this will probably do the trick. Oops, what am I doing? Let's try that. That should do the trick there. And what we want to do is bring in some CSS. So let's bring in a CSS style and call it, um, well, first of all, let's do some page styles. Um, and also we need to bring in some input styles. And then the second, we need to bring in the fancy stuff, which is the callouts. Okay, so let me just try and find these files that I did a little bit earlier on. Uh, page CSS, all we have here, very simple. We've got some background color, color on the body, setting the font size, we've got the wrapper, which is this thing here. Okay, so identifying that. And we've got a header area and a footer area. Um, the reason why I'm including a header and a footer to this form is to show you how we can stylize something that relates to the actual uh, page that you're on. So for example, if we wanted to do a header, uh, we could say something like this. We could go um, h1, sign up for a free account. Um, and then maybe an H2 saying uh, no credit card required. It's, it is free. So 
something like that. And then in the footer, I don't, I don't know what we can put in here. For now, maybe we'll just put a copyright. Whoops. Future proof it. Right, so let's have a quick look at what this looks like. So, um, if we have a particular style that we wanted to use, um, we'd need to stylize the form accordingly. So, let's just open up um, Inspector Tools for a start. So we can actually see what we're dealing with here. Um, inside here, we want to actually start stylizing some of these things as well. So, let's bring in a page format as well. So, we brought in page, and let's bring in inputs. CSS. Let's just check that's pointing to the right place. It's actually inputs.css. Um, I'm going to take callouts for now. Let's just go back to Chrome. So all we've done here is just stylize this a little bit. Um, what you'll notice is there are some little icons here um, for different mandatory fields. And so I'm using the pseudo selector here. And if you can see this where you have input required you can also have um, plenty of others as well, which which I'll show you in the form. Let me just show you here. Okay, this stuff. So you can have required, valid, invalid, focus, and all we're doing is adjusting a background image and also adjusting the outline. So the overall effect of that is depending on the state of the inputs, it's going to change what it's going to look like. All right, so let's have a look what that does look like in Chrome. So if I click Submit now, you still get the same validation bubbles because we haven't actually addressed, addressed that. Um, but you get this saying, please fill out this field, because at the moment it's an invalid state. What you'll notice is you don't get the invalid state showing up. So if I add a word in here, this is now valid. And again, you're not showing the valid state, except this has changed. So Inspector Tools helps you in a lot of instances, but in this instance, it doesn't really help you out. You can't go here and just kind of change to a valid or invalid state it doesn't let you do it like you can with hover states which is a little frustrating so you have to go through here you have to go through all this process um, and then try the password again and again when you've got the right amount because this is looking for six digits you know that becomes valid the problem is we want to adjust this we want this in the style of our website now there's no way we can actually adjust this if I go over here and I try and inspect this. Actually, just zoom out a little bit. As you can see, there is no way to bring up this button. Nothing is changing in the inspector. So I can't go in here and adjust this drop shadow, or, or I can't even change this arrow here, can't change this image. There's no easy way of doing it. However, if you know your CSS, you can get around this. And that's what I want to show you. we can adjust the callout. So I've created a callout CSS file, and I'll give you all these files. Not that much, as you can see. Um, what you can do is you can do the WebKit validation bubble message. And in this instance, I've just stylized it. I've got some texture, which is the same as the header and footer. And I've adjusted some of the borders and text shadows, etc. I've even brought in a different font. So as we're bringing in this font, I'm probably going to need to bring that in in a second. Um, this is a tricky one, okay? Because once you find the validation bubble message, um, it has a child div, which again, we need to find anything that immediately follows it because you can control a title tag and that will stylize this differently. I'll show you that in a second. And then we can choose the bubble icon, bubble arrow. Um, and one thing that I'm doing here with a before filter is adjusting this WebKit transform because by default, the validation bubble arrow is rotated, so we have to adjust this to get it lined up in the way we want it. So we have, well, in this instance, I'm going to bring up an arrow, and it's going to be kind of tilted. Okay, so first things first, let's go and bring in that font. And we can do that with Google Web Fonts. So let's just nip over to Chrome and go to uh, Google Web Fonts. It's dead easy. Um, the font we want to use, Lobster. Do a quick use. Head down there, back over to Sublime, paste it in. Job done. 
Okay, so now we can use uh, lobster font, which I've declared here, as you can see. Okay. Uh, the other thing I want to do, and this is good practice for you guys, is to use normalize. If you've not heard of this, um, I suggest you check it out. Okay, and it allows you to reset your style sheets in a, in a pretty efficient way. So we go over to the download. I'm taking this here, going back to Sublime, and I'm going to paste this in. Whoops, I need to do a link tag, and then paste that in. Let's get rid of that. And now let's see what this looks like in Chrome. It's just neatened up a little bit. Now, this is an extreme example, obviously. It's not how you design it. I just want to show you the way you can override it. It's an important thing. So here, as soon as I click Submit now, we are able to stylize the arrow. We're able to stylize the font and everything to match the particular style of the site. Um, one thing that is interesting to me is adjusting the title tag. I'll show you this. So you choose an email. It's if notice it doesn't validate properly, but never mind. That's just the way HTML5 validation works for email. Uh, this, there is some more information here. We can say, um, you know, this requires six digits. Okay, and the way you can adjust that is with a title tag. So let's go over to Sublime and let's adjust it. Okay, and then you'll see what happens here. Oops. This is stylized uh, as a title tag underneath it. Okay, so you can get pretty good customization as long as you're willing to work on these um, call outs. And again, I'm going to give you these in the body of the uh, tutorial, but it's nothing more than overriding the bubble arrows, the bubble icon, and bubble messages, and this is the title area underneath it. Um, so just by adding a few styles here, adjusting some pseudo selection here for your required valid and invalid, um, and you know, you're able to match it to the style of your site um, using HTML5. So let's just have a look back at that to finish out. Submit, fill in a name. There you go, and if it's wrong, it tells you. Okay, so that's how you override forms. Oh, and one last thing, um, if you're looking at this on YouTube, you should head over to the Maracana website and you'll see beneath this video all the code that I used throughout the uh, tutorial. Hope that helps. See you next time.